you very much for the opportunity. My name is Gordon, the WHO um, focal person on climate change and health. And I'm in charge of the project Urban Health Initiative that is looking at reducing um, uh, pollution in our airspace and to improve quality of health, especially in our cities. So the Urban Health Initiative um, is a CCAC project that WHO is the main partner. We also have the UN environment and the Norwegian government contributing significantly to the success of this particular initiative. And in Ghana, we have the UN, uh, we also have the UN Habitat, ICLE, and the US EPA, the Stockholm Environment in, uh, Institute, that are our international partners in terms of guidelines and uh, tools that we are using in the implementation of this program. Then as a, a health-centered program, we are working with the Ministry of Health and the Ghana Health Service. We also work with the Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, the Ghana EPA, Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development, because of the environmental health specialists that are under the Ministry of Local Government. And the project was started somewhere uh, 2016 in November, and hopefully this year, by the end of this year, the project will come to an end in Ghana. Next. Yeah, so in terms of uh, key steps we have taken in uh, towards reducing the impact of climate change on health, um, as a new program, first we did the country policy mapping. We're trying to understand which are the policies as a country, that, uh, which policies does Ghana have in the space of climate change or which regulations, what does their environment regulations say when it comes to climate change. Then we did a lot of uh, resource workshops with the baseline data that we gathered and trying to um, let people understand the object, the objective of the program and also going forward, uh, trying to seek their support in which way uh, possible. Then we did some capacity building for especially the health uh, sector workers, where waste managers, uh, communities, uh, health, the health staff, environment, environmental health specialists, then the school health promotion teachers who also engage, who also engage the school children in their various schools to understand the impact of climate change on their health and to also adapt some um, environmentally friendly behaviors in the schools. And as we see in the pictures over there, the students have created a lot of green parks within their environments and we have a lot of uh, activities ongoing in both communities and in schools as well. We also have the environmental clubs in the schools and we have community sanitation police that are uh, safeguarding the environmental quality of their communities, especially trying to prevent uh, open uh, waste burning and also the indiscriminate dumping of refuse within the environment. Then through the Brief Life uh, campaign, which is an outreach that is done at the community level. So we build community capacities to be able to engage themselves on how to live uh, their lives, to how to live clean lives and adapt some environmentally friendly behaviors that aim at protecting our environment and climate as well. Then we also developed some policy scenarios in the various sectors. The Urban Health Initiative is looking at um, land use planning, waste management, household energy use. And then uh, these are the areas that we are then, and then also on transport. These are areas we realize uh, we're contributing significantly to the levels of pollution that the city Accra is currently facing. Then, as I mentioned, the school-based uh, greening programs were also undertaken. In terms of uh, activity, uh, progress that the program achieved, we supported the Ghana Environmental Protection Agency to develop the, air, the first air quality management plan and a communication strategy because we just didn't want to develop an air quality management plan. We also developed the communication strategy to help them educate 
send the message of the air quality plan to the very people that needed such information. Then the, we revised the Ghana pollution standards, pollution and emission standards were reviewed through the intervention of this program. Then now we have uh, improved a lot of our monitor, air quality monitoring stations in the country. Before the Urban Health Initiative, Ghana had only five air quality monitoring stations. But as we speak, we now have 16 air quality monitoring sites located across various sites, uh, stations within the country, trying to uh, tell daily air pollution levels within some of the key areas within Accra. Then we also have, uh, we've also tried to, uh, through the purple air uh, low cost census, try to make air quality data as open as possible and accessible to the public. So at the click of a button, air, uh, purple air, you see the location of some of our low, low cost census and be able to tell the levels of pollution within the city. Then we also help the Accra, uh, the Greater Accra Metropolitan Assembly to develop a climate action plan, which we are also looking to replicate in some of the cities within uh, Ghana. And also have the, uh, the Accra Resilience Strategy, and we are also supporting the, the Accra Green Project, which we uh, planted over 2,000 seedlings within the city, trying to create green parks within the city and revamp some of the already dying green fields that we had within the city. Then we also help the uh, Minister of Transport to develop the mobility plan, which we are, they are currently uh, implementing. Then in terms of uh, policy and uh, policy guidelines, we developed the, uh, we tried, we did a lot of data collection to understand the current situation. And from that, we are able to develop some of these uh, policy documents that are currently uh, published on the WHO IRIS. So uh, listeners can just uh, refer to the WHO IRIS and have, without, um, with um, all these progress, we also had a lot of challenges with uh, throughout the project implementation. In Ghana, for instance, we realize um, there's very poor coordination of climate change and, and, and climate change related programs. There is no single unit that is coordinating some of these activities. So identifying key partners to work with is always a very big challenge. So we see multi-sectoral engagement is very good. And that has been the main success of the program, working to the extent of the community level, getting traditional leaders, queen mothers, all involved, youth groups all involved to achieve success. Then um, as a program with this, uh, no, dedicated funding for the, pro, uh, for the position of a technical officer at the WCO to help government implement some of these activities, which is a very big challenge to the Ghana country office. Then we, the, uh, the usual impact of COVID came, most of our activities that were planned face to face, we had to postpone them because of the COVID restrictions. Then there is also poor political appeal of climate change in general, uh, activities when it comes to uh, government taking key decisions on climate change. Uh, you know, the politicians always want immediate results that the people will appreciate them and retain them in power. But climate investment are long term. So it is very difficult convincing um, political actors to take uh, climate investment seriously, especially in Africa and also in Ghana as well. Then there is low institutional capacity in fundraising to tackle some of the problems that we identified. So in terms of uh, next steps, we are looking at further building the capacity of the various institutions in terms of waste management and also tree planting and uh, building their capacity to understand how climate change is really having a health burden on the country. Then we are still developing a few of the technical reports which we are going to make uh, uh, public and disseminate through workshops and uh, we get the contribution of stakeholders on how to progress further with some of these issues. Then um, uh, policy tracking. We realize most of our policy regulations are just WHO. We sometimes feel the side of tracking to see the progress we are making with some of these policy guidelines and policy decisions. So we are developing, we are currently developing a framework that will help us 
do a cross-sectional institutional tracking to see how these uh, institutions that have been involved in the urban health initiative, how they are using the best practices and recommendations that the project has uh, given over the last uh, three to four years. So this is the, uh, these are some of the next steps that the program will be undertaking here in Ghana. Thank you.